Jesus. Catholic doctrine. Mm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a sovereign God. Christ came in the form of man, and then he left to return. But he sent his Spirit, the Comforter, and you will notice that what the Spirit is doing is I lighting Jesus. So, God bless you. Amen. We have a word today. We have a today. word today. The <coughs> word is stretch. Stretch. It's a verb of something soft or elastic to, to be made or to be capable of being made longer or wider without tearing or breaking. To straighten or extend one's body or part of one's body to its full length, typically so as to tighten one's muscles or in order to reach something. <coughs> to extend or spread over a period of time or cause someone to make maximum use of their talents or abilities. Stretch is also a continuous area or expanse of land or water. The stretch, the home stretch. And another informal um, word meaning is a period of time spent in prison. Stretch. You did a four year stretch for a burglary. Stretch. And okay. informal, another meaning is a stretch limo. Mm. <clears throat> Riding those things. Yes. <coughs> Word of the day, Zenith. The point of the celestial sphere that is directly opposite the nadar and vertically above the observer. The highest point reached in the heavens by a celestial body. A culminating point or a formal meaning the strongest or most successful period of time. Word of the day, fatuous. It's an adjective. Complacently or inanely foolish or silly. And we read about that in Matthew 25. Mm -hmm. Word of the day, auspice, noun, a divine or prophetic token. Phrases under the auspices of, with the help, support, or protection of. It comes from the Latin auspicium, from auspex, observer of birds. From Avis Bird and Spexer to look. Horology. Hmm? 
to look. To look. Right? Mm -hmm. Looking in the camera. Looking in the camera. Yeah, look. Okay. Horology, the art or science of making timepieces or of measuring time from the Spanish La Hora. <clears throat> A synonym for innumerable is myriad. Myriad is a countless or extremely great number. And in classical history is a unit of 10,000. So we read that um, Greek Murio, 10,000. And we read of um, the woman singing and answering said, Saul has slain his thousands and did and David his ten thousands. Now in the book, The Amazing Side Effects of Prayer, a miraculous deliverance was described on page 23 by the Israelites. Israelites freed from Egyptian bondage. And we read, just a few days prior, Miriam, the sister of Moses, sung a Majestic him to God, ascribing power and might to him. In the King James Version, we read Exodus 15, 20 to 21. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. So Miriam danced. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. So we see that Miriam answered. It was Moses' rod that was stretched across the Red Sea and parted it. But it was Aaron's rod that blossomed and, bo and bare ripe almonds overnight. In the end time, the rod of my son will blossom and bear diamonds and crown pearls for the heads of the faithful servants of God. Ezekiel 21, 10 cents. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. The sword is the scepter that shall not depart from Judah, as we read in Genesis 49, verse 10. In chapter 3 of prayer, the amazing side effects of prayer, uh, um, the pastor practiced his sermon to deliver at a Sunday night service during his undergrad years. At the time appointed, the microphone went dead, just as he was building momentum. Standing before hundreds of students, I had a mixed chorus before me. Those in front were able to hear me clearly, while those in the back of the chapel had a hard time discerning my voice. Page 26. <coughs> This experience served to highlight the two classes in the church. The Esau class at the front live after the flesh and feed on the empty sermons of the Laodicean pastors. The Jacob class at the back are faithful. Look in the camera. <coughs> are faithful. The, the Jacob class at the back of the church are the faithful ones who think for themselves and feed on milk, butter, and honey. The truth. They sigh and cry for all the abominations done in the midst of the church so that they can receive the seal of the living God in their foreheads. Now there was a turnabout. To make matters worse, when the closing hymn was sung, to my utter shock and dismay, the microphones began to work. One set of ministers will be discharged from service while the other set chosen to give the loud cry. The majestic hymn could be nothing more than the three little birds song. The three little birds come with the three angels message of warning. But there's a fourth bird to join the three to announce judgment in the church. This is big bird clothed in yellow garb of light howling about the cleansing of the sanctuary, the separation in the church, and the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. And what do the pastors do? They say it is false. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing going to be all right. Woke up this morning, facing the rising sun. Three little birds. They prefer the prophet Marley, who say everything's going to be all right. 
God says, sigh and cry. Mm -hmm. We have to strive with all our might to enter into, to be a part of the 144,000. What do they say? No, you don't have to do that. If you don't get into the 144,000, mm -hmm. you can get into the great multitude. It's a win-win. Don't worry <laughs> about a thing. D-Day is coming for the church in the form of a massacre. But nobody is paying attention. They smell the sulfur in the air, but it's all good. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. And the rising sun is there, like a sun god. Now the tree that cumbereth and the tree of life. The tree of life is the mustard, mustard tree. The Georgia Cumberland Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, a symbol of the tree in Luke 13. The youth pastor Quintana came to us to announce the fifth symbolic year because his name Kint is number five. Number five. In 2004, there was a serious accident at the conference when five of the leaders collided. They played into a tree. Five died, one escaped. That was a sad time, yes. All the leaders. Christianity is about growth, and if there's no development after time, you will cease to exist. So when the, when the microphone came on at the end, it means that those who endure to the end can sing. Don't worry about a thing. For every little thing will be all right. No more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more homelessness. All nations will hear the sweet gospel call of the kingdom. All nations will gather together and come and serve God. All nations will join with God's people to promote peace and righteousness in the earth. All nations will serve us in the form of gathering people, going to the highways and byways, tell them to come out of Babylon. The halfway tree clock and the large cotton tree stands as a stark witness to the fact that the half-hearted ones in the church will, like the tree that cumber it, will be cut down in the half-hour silence in Revelation 8. Those who do not have on the wedding garment, the robe of Christ's righteousness, will be barred out of God's swift coming kingdom. Now, <clears throat> let me see what else I have. Now, um, our God is the greatest who has redeemed us unto his own, so we are lively stones. We are rebuilding a temple of praise. Now, God is not going to cleanse a physical building. He's going to cleanse the actual bodies of the people who he wants in his kingdom. So the great and dreadful day is looming. And there have been many signs of a bright light that is coming to guide the people and I am um, bright light is here <coughs> the bright light is here bright light is here are we walking in the light that's the key now Elisha and the Syrians Elisha, Elisha. Mm -hmm. in 2nd King 6 8 to 22 the king of Assyria always came to trouble Israel. Mm -hmm. So one day he said to, he said to his um, army, which one of you um, is with the, the, the king of Israel? And one of his men said, ah, no one, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, tell it the king the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. <laughs> So the, the king gathered now to um, circle to mm -hmm. capture Elisha. And Elisha.
prayed and, and God blinded the army. And Elisha said to them, no, this is not the way you are to go. Come, let me lead you. In their blindness, he led them straight to the capital of Israel. When the king of Israel saw them, no, he said, shall I smite them? Elisha said, no, give them bread and water. So we fly so beneath who, the radar. God struck them with blindness. Mm -hmm. And Elijah lead them into the capital of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord restored their sight. And the king of Israel said, shall I smite them? And Elijah said, no, you can't smite them. Give them bread and water. And they made an abundance feast, abundance feast for them. Elijah. Elijah. It reminds us of all. Um, those, the, the army that tricked, tried to trick Joshua, they were scared of them when oh. they crossed over Jordan. The Gibeonites? Yes, and then he told them that we, we have come from far, they tore up their clothes, they rubbed mud all over <laughs> them, and showed that they are coming from a far place. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they, event they eventually found out that they were lying. neighbors, yeah, they were yes, lying, yes. and they, because of, because being afraid of the, the, the army uh, uh -huh. of um, Joshua, they said, oh, oh. all right, we'll not slay them, we'll make them jars of wood. And hewers. Hewers of wood are jars, and jars of water. Of water. From the okay. So everywhere, God's people are people tremble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the time is coming when the world will tremble. Yes. Yeah. The government, the power, most powerful man will tremble when God exalts himself through his church. That's yes. what that's the cook of what we're talking about. Well, yes, as you say, uh, we, we fly under the radar. <coughs> Uh, for well, now. For now, but then we'll catch the eye to attract attention to be noticed. <laughs> for, for God's name. So. Yeah, for God's name. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes, so. All right. That's it. All right. So we are thankful to God, thankful for whatever you can glean from the word today. Yeah. Um, and, uh, make uh, some use of it. Uh, you know these things are a reminder to us from time to time that we are living in the last days. Happy Sabbath, those who are still in it, we are both closed right now. Mm -hmm. And so <coughs> we are going to we're going to do a little more on this and then we close with the Sabbath. Thank you for being there. Share the message, really. We are showing you the connection before we close now. We'll show you the connection and we come again on this parable. So God <coughs> sends to his people the time, all things are ready. All things are ready. The Bible here defines two periods in particular. The first period is while the gospel has bade many. Remember this, many is never all. <laughs> and when God used many, as in the case of Revelation chapter 10, he said, prophesy again unto many. Oh, many is incomplete according to God, right? Because mm -hmm. many is not all. And there's a distinction with that. They bade many, that was the first call. Uh, the first period is while the gospel 
as bade many according to verse 16, to the marriage supper, a time from the apostles, and we saw that more clearly as I quoted there, Revelation chapter 10. So that's one period. So we notice that the parable is <coughs> uh, defining the different periods. Uh, God sends to his people, tell them all things already. The next period is the time in which the last servant, according to verse 17, the last servant and we may not know who, but now, before we look at Matthew 20, we never may not have never known, but now we know that the last servant are those the servant is sent, we are told, at supper time at the end of the day, indicating that he bears the last message over he is at first sent to those who have previously been bidden, that is, to those who were already in the gospel truth. <laughs> now, God makes distinction. <coughs> they were in the church. In the church. Mm -hmm. The old said he is to contact a class of people deeply engrossed with the cares of this life and is to tell them that all things are now ready, that if they wish, they can now prepare, go to the wedding, there to enjoy the bride bridegroom's banquet. This is the last call for supper. We will unpack Luke 14 a little more. Uh, the sun has set, and we would like to close. Yes. I want to sing supper time. Oh, supper time. Supper time. <laughs> like to sing that. And as she digs for it. Not because you are in the ship, it means that you are safe. Many are making excuses because they believe they are safe in the ship of the church. Stay on the ship. You are safe on the ship. It's a deception. Because then you have a lot of self-confidence. That everything is well. And you can do as you like because you're on the church register. 
you are safe, you are in the church and you have a high position. <laughs> Pastor says you're in good and regular standing. You're in good and regular standing in the church. A faithful tithe payer, a good Adventist. Faithful tithe payer, a good Adventist. Good Adventist. All that is not bad. But when he sends a message to you right there, you say you don't need it. If you don't believe me, look what he says about the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3. The Laodiceans are wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. But they, their claim, our claim is that we are rich and increased with goods and we need nothing so I can make excuses. I can tell the Lord that I have a piece of land. I can tell the Lord that I don't care about his supper, his kingdom. Because I've married a wife, I've, 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 I've something else to do. Worldly, material things have been choking God's church. Many years ago, in days of trouble. Son, it is 
supper time. that once more but you know for me time has woven a realization of a truth that's even more thrilling that's when the call comes from the portals of glory Supper time when all God's children shall gather round the table with the Lord Himself at the greatest Listen supper time the of them all. Second, God is first. She agrees. Going home at Let us 
us close. This calls for us to let us come to the throne of grace and pray to close that God will impress upon our hearts, all of us, the importance of his word compared to other things, no matter how nice they are. Eternal Father, again we thank you, we praise you. We have read in Dr. Luke of that great supper representing a final uh, stage of man's redemption when we will be when we are invited into your kingdom it has clear application to us it is significant that you have pointed out those who were invited first those who were in the lanes byways in the lanes uh, and those who were in the highways and byways. So those are different sections that you have taken pains to write and to explain to us how the finishing of the gospel will take place. Amen. We know that you have gone to prepare for a place for us. Yes. And of a surety, your word will not return to you void. It will happen. We will be in thy kingdom. Amen. But it's clear that your kingdom is in three phases. The premillennial on earth, the millennial in heaven, yes. and the post-millennial back on earth. Amen. Good we Lord. thank you for the light that the Holy Spirit has shed on it. We want to pray for everyone in the hearing of our voice that we will continue to study that will anoint them, they will not pick and choose uh, because who they are listening once is your word, because we know that there is a time when there, this is a time when many voices are trying to crowd out this still small voice, but as soon as one is convicted of the truth, Help us all not to look around and what the crowd or what the majority is doing, but focus on the fact that you have called us, each one, to start the journey with you mm -hmm. and to end it with you. At last, save us all in your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And we wish for you a <laughs> great week. God bless you. Supper time. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Cheers to change. Change. Yes. Cheers to new beginnings. Yes. Cheers to new beginning. Well, yes. <clears throat> Cheers to victory. Victory lap. Well, come, Jen. This is significant. God has uh, changed <laughs> water into wine. Oh, and yes. New wine. Yes, the new wine. And um, 
those who are thirsty, come. Come. God bless you. Thank you. Join us again. I don't know what's happened to this screen. Mm -hmm. But, uh, music. <laughs>